All right then, gang. So this is the solution to the previous challenge where we get some live feedback when we enter into an input. So when the email becomes valid, then we get a green tick and we get the green border. But when it's not valid, that styling goes away. So this is kind of the end point and I gave you the starter project which was just something like this to begin with an import and the tick which is always there and black to begin with and when we type in an email address that is valid nothing changes so we don't get any of that live feedback so now I'm going to show you how I did it all right then so I've got open the starter project that I told you about in the last video where I set out this challenge and remember you can get that from the github repository the link to that is going to be down below and inside the index.html file, we don't actually need to do anything. Everything that we need is already here. So we have the form inside the body, which has a div inside that, the class of field for this form field. And inside that, we have a label which says enter your email, then an input for that label of type text, name email, and ID email. That's what we're typing into. And then down here, we have a span for the tick, and we're using material icons for that. That's already loaded up up here. And this is the name of the icon done. And when material icon sees that kind of keyword, that name, it shows the tick SVG icon instead. So we have all we need here. And by the way, this has an ID of email, which we will be using probably later in the JavaScript. We might not, we'll see, to get a handle on this input right here. But the first thing I wanna do is just style a couple of these things inside the CSS. So let me open that up and scroll right down here. So to begin with, I want to style this little tick so it's green, all right? So let me, first of all, show you this. It has a class of tick right here, this span. Now this is nothing to do with material icons, this class. I just added this so we could grab a hold of it from the CSS and use it as a selector. So let me say that, dot tick, and then inside here, give this a color, and I'm gonna paste it in. It's hash 07cc81, and it's this green color, all right? So if we save it now, looks a bit nicer. All right, so next up, we want to style the border of this as well. Now, later on, we're only gonna style the border of this green if the email inside it becomes valid. So at this point right here, it would become green, but I wanna style it green regardless of that validation, first of all, just to see how it looks. So let me come down here and I'm gonna say form input and I'm putting form in front of it to make it more specific because the default styles up here, you can see we have form input as well. So if I just use input right here, then it's not gonna override this border color. So form inputs and the border hyphen color is gonna be that same color, that green. So let me save that and we can see it's that green color. Now, if I press into this, notice the outline, the black above it. Now, that's gonna be the case when we're typing in, so we don't really see that green border underneath, just a little bit around the edges. So also, as well as this, we need to add on another property, which is the outline color, and that's the color of whatever the outline is right here when it's in focus, when we put the curse into it. So let me say outline color as well, and we're gonna give that the same green color so that now when we're focusing on this, it's green. Now, like I say, this is only gonna be the case later on for the tick and for the input when this value is a valid email, right? So what we're gonna do is ultimately in the JavaScript, apply a class of valid to maybe this right here so it can be styled differently. Or in fact, we could probably apply a class of valid to this thing right here because then it could capture anything inside it. So what I'm going to do is come over here and say, okay, well, yeah, we'll style the tick always this color, right? But to begin with, we'll say the opacity is gonna be zero. All right, so to begin with, it won't show. And then what I'm gonna do is come down here and say, okay, well, when we have a valid class above the tick, so when this right here has a class of valid, which we're gonna apply later on with JavaScript when the email is valid, then I want to show it again. So in this case, I could say the opacity is one again, and it would show. So to begin with, it doesn't show, but as soon as this has a class of valid, like this, then it does show right here, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do for the tick first of all. And then also, if we come over here, I only want to style this import these colors if we have that class of valid right here as well, because otherwise I just want it to be gray or black. So 
again what I'm going to do is put the valid class selector in front of this so now only when this has a class of valid will the input be styled green around the corners or around the edges okay so let me now come over here I think that's all we need to do for now to be honest now let's start work on the JavaScript so remember the job that we have to do in this file is to first of all detect when a user types into this and as they type each letter every time basically they press a key or we get a key up event after they press a key then we want to evaluate what's currently inside the input and we want to say look does the value currently inside that input match what an email should look like all right and to do that we're going to be using a regular expression so the first thing i want to do is get a handle on the input right here so that i can attach an event listener to it and that event is going to be a key up event so every time they press a key and the key comes back up then we can fire a function to kind of match what they type into the import the value of the import at that point to a regular expression for an email and if they match then we would maybe apply a class of valid to this field and then we get those extra styles right here okay so let's give this a whirl first of all i want to grab a handle on this input so at the top i'm going to say const email oops we need a space email input is equal to document dot query selector like so and inside here we want to use the id email because that was the id we gave this so let's do that hash email all right so now we can attach an event listener to that so i can come down here and say email input which was the name of our constant and then we want to add an event listener like so and we want it to be a key up event and whenever that happens we fire a function whereby we also get the event object in case we need it so let's open this up and for now all i'm going to do is console log a message so we can test this so console.log e dot target so that's the target element which should be the input and we're going to output the current value so whatever the value is at that moment in time inside this input all right so let me save this and we'll try it out and by the way it's already hooked up down here so we don't need to do anything inside the html to hook this file up so let me open the dev tools and then the console and let's try typing in here so each time i type a letter notice we get the full value output right over here okay so it's all working so all we need to do now is to create a regular expression for an email address to match against whatever they type in here and if it matches then we'll apply a class of valid to that div in the html all right so let's try creating this regular expression so first of all let's give this a name this constant i'm going to call it email regex like so and i'm going to set it equal to something and i'm just going to paste this in and then walk you through this regular expression now i don't want this to be a big lesson about regular expressions because that would take forever so if you want to learn about regex then i've got a whole tutorial series all about it and the link to that playlist is down below i'm also going to link to a specific video in that playlist which describes in much more detail how i constructed this regular expression for an email and this is kind of like a basic regular expression for an email right so first of all what would a typical email look like well the one we're doing looks something like this hello or doesn't matter what it is mario at net ninja dot well we could say code at uk or something like that so basically we have different parts of this email address that we need to kind of match against whatever the user types in here we have the first part which is their name i suppose then we have the at symbol then we have whatever the domain is and then we have kind of this extension at the end which could be .com, .dev, .co.uk and there could be one dot in here or two dots as we have right now .co.uk so we need to match against each of these different parts all right and that's what we do up here so each of these parentheses is a different part in this email 
So as always, we start with a forward slash, end with a forward slash, and to begin the regular expression to say it must be at the start, we use a caret. This is regex basics. And then this is the first part right here inside these parentheses. So this name part. And we say right here, we could have a range of characters, okay? And it could be any uppercase, that's what A to Z means here, and any lowercase, right? So that could be any uppercase or lowercase letter, but also it could be any numbers. And to say we want to match against the number, we can do backslash D, and that will match any number zero to nine. But also we could have full stops or periods inside this first bit as well. So it could be mario.luigi at netninja.co.uk. This would be a valid email address as well. So we need to match against any possible dot as well. And that is a backslash and then dot. And also hyphens. We could have hyphens inside that first part as well. So we need to match against those. And this plus at the end means this range of characters can be however long it needs to be. So it doesn't matter if it's three characters, it doesn't matter if it's like 50 characters, it really doesn't matter, okay? So after that first part, we have this at symbol, so we're matching against that, that needs to be there after that first part. And then this part down here, this domain bit, is represented by this set of parentheses right here. So again, we have any uppercase or lowercase letter, any digit, not to nine, oops, and then finally, we can have a hyphen as well. So that can be in here as well. And then after this bit right here, we need a dot. So we have to say backslash dot. That's how we match against a dot in a regular expression. So that must be there. And then we have this part right here, which could be .co, .com, .dev. And so that's this stuff right here. And we say it could be any uppercase or lowercase letter between two and six characters long. All right. So it can be two characters long. It could be six characters long. Okay. Or it could be anything in between. So it would match .dev, for example. All right then. And then after that, we have this last bit, which is kind of optional. Now we make it optional because after this set of parentheses right here, we add this question mark. And this means make this last bit right here optional if we add a question mark after it and again this could be any uppercase or lowercase letter between two and six characters long all right so it would match this right here or something a little bit longer as well okay and then this just means match this at the end of the string so if there was more stuff at the end then it wouldn't match because this part right here is not at the end of the string it's kind of the opposite to the carrot right all right, so this is to match basically a pretty basic email address. It might not be a perfect match, but for this tutorial, it's good enough. So we have the email regex now, and now all we need to do inside this function down here is take this value that we have, the current value inside the input, and try and match it against this regular expression to see if it's a valid email address. So the way we're gonna do this is by doing an if check. So we can say if, and then we take our email regex right here this thing and then on that we can use a method called test and we can test a value against that regular expression so that value is going to be this thing right here the value currently inside the input so we can paste that inside here now that is going to return true this thing right here if there is a match so if we have a value inside the input which looks like a an email address and it matches this it passes this regular expression test then this will be true and if that's the case what we want to do is we want to take this parent div right here so the parent of the input and we want to apply a class of valid to that div so we can say email input which is the input field and then we want the parent element of that the div so we say parent elements right here and that gets us that parent element div and then to add a class we can say class list and then use a method called add and whatever class we want to add, which is gonna be valid. So this gets us a list of all the classes currently on that DOM element. And then this method can be used on this property to add a new class, which is gonna be valid. Now then, we need an else case right here because if we try to do this, if we try to do this test and it fails, then we want to remove the class. Now, you might be thinking, well, why do we need to remove it? Because if we already have a class of valid, it means it's valid. Why do we need to remove it? Well, if I was to enter in an email, so sean at 
netninja.dev, for example. Now, at this moment, it would be valid and we'd have that class. But if I start to delete again, then I want to then remove that class, okay? And we're still firing this function every time we delete an item inside this input right here because that is still a key up event. So we need to do this else clause right here to remove the element or rather to remove the class if this doesn't pass. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it down here. And instead of add this time, we just need the remove method and we remove the valid class, all right? So that's pretty much it for the JavaScript, I think. Let me now go over here and let's start to type something in. So Mario at net ninja, oops, yep, dot co dot uk. And you can see we get this tick right here because we're showing that now because we have that valid class. And if I go to elements over here and take a look at this, we can see this valid class right here now. Now, if I start to delete this, then that valid class goes away and we no longer see the tick. And remember, that's because in the CSS, we say that the original opacity of the tick is zero, but when we have that valid class above it, give it an opacity of one. So it comes into the DOM essentially. Well, it doesn't come in, it just kind of goes from being invisible to visible again, all right? So that's pretty good. So let's add that in again, netninja.dev. Okay, now at the minute, this doesn't seem to be working. We don't seem to get that input border color when we have that class of valid. So let me just take a look at why that might be. And it's actually because of the order of this selector right here, because if we take a look at the HTML, you can see that the form is this div's parent. And what we're saying is we want to look for something with a class of valid, which is the parent of the form because it comes first over here. So instead we need to say form.valid input and that should work now. So let's come back over here and we can see now we get that green outline, awesome. But if we take some of this away, then it goes back to being gray again. So this is working, right? We have all of this validation, this live feedback working. The only thing I want to do is instead of popping in this tick right here, I want to animate it in so it's a little more subtle. So to do that, we can just add on a transition property to the tick. So I could say transition and we want to target all properties and I'm going to say ease in and it's going to be 0.2 seconds. And that means that whenever some kind of property changes on this tick, like when we add this valid class to the parent element, this opacity changes, it means we don't just kind of go to that change straight away. It doesn't flick like a light switch. Instead, we kind of transition to it over 0.2 seconds. And this is just an easing function to make it seem a little bit more natural. So right here, we could say opacity as well because that's all we're transitioning, but all is gonna target all properties if there were others changing as well. So if we take a look at this over here now, if I delete a few of these, it's gonna fade out a little bit. You see that? And then when I get the email correct, it's gonna fade in. So it looks a little nicer, a little more subtle. I also wanna make it so that it animates or transitions up a little bit as well. So what I could do is give it an initial position that was a little lower down. So I could say transform to begin with and translate in the Y direction, which is up and down. And I want it to go down by 20 pixels to begin with. So that would be the initial position, 20 pixels down here. Now, obviously initially we can't see on the page because the opacity is zero, but it's gonna be in that original position down at the bottom. Now, what I could do is also add this property down here and change that this time to be zero pixels. And so now, because we said all, it's gonna transition this property as well, the transform. So it's gonna go from 20 pixels down to the original position again. So let me now refresh, and I'm gonna say Mario at net ninja dots, and then watch this, it will come up from the bottom. See like that? And that looks a little nicer. Awesome. And that, my friends, is pretty much it. So I really hope you enjoyed this challenge. If you did, please do not forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot. And I'm going to see you in the very next one.